On the 5th of February 1939, at 3.35am on Gravesend Airfield, southeast of London, UK, Alex Henshaw opens the throttle of his heavily laden Percival Mew Gull, G-A-E-X-F. His destination, Wingfield Airfield, Cape Town, South Africa. After arrival and a short 27-hour rest, it was all the way back to Gravesend, arriving there to a hero's welcome at 1.51 p.m. on the 9th of February, 1939. Four days, 10 hours, and 16 minutes to cover 20,000 kilometers, solo, in a single-engined light aircraft. A feat so astounding that the record still stands today, 70 years later. In his book, Flight of the Mughal, Sir Alex Henshaw laid down a challenge to any pilot in the world with any aircraft with less than 200 horsepower to complete the flight in less time than the XF did. May 2009, one man has found the courage to take on this challenge. Charles Chalky Stobbert, an Airbus A340 captain with SAA, boasting 20,000 flying hours on his logbook, including long-range flights in light aircraft, plans to depart from Cape Town International Airport in Tony van den Heerfel's home-built Osprey GP4. The trip to the UK will be as direct as modern airways will allow, with minimal fuel stops. The target, to complete the flight in less than four days, to shatter the 70-year-old record and bring it back to South African soil. So what exactly does a trip like this entail? And how can the record be broken? I think the significance of any record is um, human endurance. The 1930s was the era of uh, people setting records. Uh, it, aviation was starting to grow up, going, uh, having started in the early 1900s. So, and then of course the Second World War got in the way. And I think after the Second World War, perhaps people forgot about uh, record setting uh, in, to the larger scale until Alex Henshaw wrote his book, uh, The Flight of the Mew Gull, which raised interest in his record that he had set. And 70 years later, nobody has attempted the, the record. Nobody has uh, successfully broken the record. What Alex Henshaw did in 1939 was absolutely amazing. The only navigation equipment he had was a magnetic compass and uh, a side rule so that he could work out his uh, ground speed and work out his position. And he managed to navigate him through Africa and find airstrips in the, sometimes in the middle of the night in, in, in the jungles of the Congo. Amazing feat that he did. Um, in the UK there's a debate going on at, at present where uh, some of the opinion that uh, this record uh, is sacrosanct. It, it shouldn't even be attempted. Anybody, nobody should attempt to break it. But uh, that's not in the spirit of, of setting records. The plan is to depart from Cape Town International Airport on uh, about 10 o'clock at night on the 7th of May and uh, route through Africa as, as close as possible to a direct line to South End in London. And today uh, we have the advantage of having better navigation equipment, autopilots and that sort of thing. So the biggest challenge is going to be uh, weather related and also uh, just staying awake for 36 hours. The aircraft is capable of a range of 1,800 nautical miles with an, an hour and a half reserves. So that allows two fuel stops only in Africa. These engines are extremely reliable and they go their full uh, certified time between overhauls. So the next problem is going to be, as I said earlier, the, the human endurance, staying awake, weather going through the intertropical convergence zone which is uh, in the vicinity of Doala up through Nigeria um, into Niger and then from there of course you have the, the Sahara Desert to cross as well. Differences between then and now as said earlier navigation today is uh, much easier with GPS however bureaucracy is much greater air traffic control um, will require specific heights to be flown rather than um, any height you want for best performance. The objective uh, is to, to show that it is possible to break a 70-year-old record 
Um, the fact that it's stood so long doesn't mean that it's insurmountable. Secondary objective is to advance, or in the people and the public's eye, the home-built aircraft, that they are capable aircraft, and the record will be registered with the FAI, which is the Federation Aeronautic International. Aviation is not inherently dangerous. If you elevate yourself higher than a bar stool, you could injure yourself. So it's a case of taking into account and doing everything that you do, doing it properly. No shortcuts. The takeoff is optional. You go when the aircraft is ready and you're ready. And if anything is untoward, stay on the ground. Much easier, much safer. The opportunity for a sponsor here is massive. The interest is global. The amount of people who will be exposed to the media interest runs into the millions or even tens of millions. It includes the entire African continent, Europe, both the North America, South America, and even into Asia. And in the country here, it, that won't only be aviation magazines and such, it will also be a general interest for the public um, in television programs and radio talk shows. Yeah, for, for a sponsor, marvelous opportunity. Personal motives. As the mountain climber said, because it's there. The, the record is there. Alex Henshaw set a challenge. And his challenge was to any pilot in the world flying any aeroplane with no more than 200 horsepower to fly the route London, Cape Town, London in less time than X-ray Foxtrot did in 1939. The actual Henshaw challenge is to do the flight in both directions in less than four days, 10 hours and 16 minutes. And this aircraft's capable of knocking a day off of that record.